tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto katoa. It's really a pleasure to be here and I'm going to acknowledge Roger Dennison uh, who after Singularity U said please come and uh, speak to you and um, I said yes I'd love to, what about this date, no can't do this date and uh, Roger demonstrates one of the critical 21st century skills of grit and resilience of continuing to ask until I finally am here. And actually it's really good to be here tonight because in the short time from October last year, I think it was, to now, already things have changed even more. So, so what I'm talking about uh, is only reinforced by what we're seeing externally, but also what we are seeing happen in our own, positively happen in our own education system. So for me tonight, I'm going to share with you my vision of how we need to and how we can think about transforming our education system. So it goes from something that delivers something like this photograph to something that delivers this photograph. And the photograph is not about robotics. It's about engaged, inspired, curious, uh, individuals that are really looking at multiple ways of pursuing the areas of interest uh, so that they can develop opportunities for themselves in terms of employment and their future life. So I'm speaking to you um, in my own right, not on behalf of NZQA, uh, and going to share my views from my involvement as a parent, my involvement as the chair of NZQA, and my involvement in the innovation space, and some of you will know I'm the chair of Callaghan Innovation as well. And in my role in um, NZQA, once a year we actually set up this. And in fact we get our performance measured on how well we do this. How well we have 450 exam centres and you know 500,000 scripts and they're on time. And if there's a storm like last year or an earthquake, how we respond to that. And what we do is we take a whole lot of our uh, bright minds that, a number, that you're all involved with in one way or the other, and we shut them in a room. And we shut them in a room and it just looks like this, and we could have taken this photo 120 years ago and it would have looked identical. And what we do is we give them a pen and a paper. And for a number of them, in about the July, we take them off any devices because they actually have to relearn how to handwrite the answer in the exam paper that we give them. But if that's not enough, they live their life just like all of us here, no matter how old we are, 24 seven with access to the world and access to all sorts of information. And we say, along with the system, no, 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 no. We aren't going to let you go in to this exam and be assessed on something that will be part of your passport to employment with access to any information. We're going to take that all away and you're going to answer it in your three hours with nothing. It is so far away from the real world. We've got even smarter now because we say, oh, by the way, don't bring your watches in because we just in case you're getting any information via your watches as well. So when we look at why we need to transform education, we need to think about um, what is the world we live in? This is a photograph as a number of you will have seen, I'm sure if you've been Googling about lots of things. Uh, in, the, in Vatican City, and it's in 2005. And this is the same place in 2013. And anyone who was at the Adele concert just a month ago will know it looked just like this. In fact, for me, it's like, how come you want to watch it on your screen when Adele's just there? And we all in globally have lived through major change. You know, we used to be farming communities and over hundreds of years we became urban communities. But the rate 
of change is the key thing that is in front of us and really challenging us to step change our education system. And that rate of change is enabled by digital technology. Technology isn't the thing, it is the enabler. And it's about this. It's about us all having access, and in 2015, not over 90% of all New Zealanders had a connection, were connected. And it's a computer that is bigger than the computing horsepower that Clinton had throughout his whole time in office. And we have it there every day with us. And what it does, it enables us access to information. It enables us to be global in terms of where we wish to participate. It enables us to participate whenever we want to participate in whatever we want to participate. And that is one of the key changes. The key, other key change is the digitisation that is powering that, is interfacing with things like biology that are meaning a, a, a computer now can actually deliver more accurate pathology results than a 10-year trained pathologist. And that's a computer that is enabled with artificial intelligence. So I thought tonight I'd just share a little bit of my journey of how have I got into this place. And about seven years ago, eight years ago, my youngest daughter was doing NCA. And we were sitting at the table over in Glandovey Road, and she was at one end, and I was on my computer at the other end, and she's got a computer. And she's studying classics. And she's got this tatty piece of paper with this vase on it, black and white, and a question she has to answer. So she's got that, but actually she's got her computer here. She can go there and find out what this vase is. And for all those people that are into classics, they'll know the soldier going this way means that and there's something else means that. She can do that in no time at all. But she's got to answer the question. So not only can she find out what the information is if she wasn't awake or at the, the class, she now has, I think, three different excellence assignments that you would get in this area. And she knows she's got to be smart enough to put them together so they're not recognised, so she can get an excellent. And I think, how cool is that? But how far away is that wasted time in the classroom with the tatty bit of paper that is actually what we used to do when we didn't have the era we live in now? And it was there... I um, said, we have got to change this, you know, and we can no longer have exams that are pen and paper exams, the world has moved on. For me, it is so frustrating that that's seven years ago. For me, it is so frustrating it's still 2020 before we'll digitise the exams, all the exams for NCA. And of course, in behind my vision is not digitising paper to you know, paper to digital. It's about all of us asking, hold on, what do we mean by assessment? What are we assessing? Are we going to teach to the test on subject matter? Uh, or are we actually looking at what are the characteristics for the future for employment in the future, life fulfillment in the future? And are we teaching that? And if we're assessing it, how are we assessing it and how are we translating it into the currency, I call it the currency of qualification or the currency of me, where I can come and say, this is who I am. And you say, fantastic, I understand who you are. Um, and it's not about I got a merit or excellent in a sub subject matter. So I'm going to talk about five uh, drivers for change uh, for our education system. And I'll give you some examples of these. I'm going to talk a bit about the future of jobs and what is that uh, ahead of us and what are we, we in our own right, and what are we preparing our kids for. I'm going to talk about borderless education and the, the porousness that we have between sovereignties now. And we all do it because we go online and we buy stuff 
and we buy it in the middle of the night and it comes with FedEx or something into our letterbox because we don't think about it as another jurisdiction, we just think we can have this access and it's about the borderless, the porousness of sovereignties. I'm going to talk about demonetization of education which is actually just big words for it's free. So there's options now that aren't about big debt at the end of a four year uh, degree uh, in, in traditional education delivery. I'm going to talk a little bit about digital natives and for me the asset that I think they are and I hope they're the tipping point to help the transformation of our system. And finally a little bit about the, how, the power that has been transferred to the individual and what that might look like in terms of digitisation. So if we think of the future of jobs, last year, or end of actually 2015, um, the Australia New Zealand Accountants, Accountants Society and Deloitte published a, a paper and they said that um, and 46%, nearly a million jobs are at risk through automation over the next two decades. McKinsey have completed a report recently and they said that 49% of the activities people do now could be automated with current technology, not developed, exponentially developing technology. And the thing in terms of this is the figures don't matter. Because I could have given you another report that said 85% of the jobs will go. I could give you one that says 35% of the jobs will go. It just is a lot. It's just a very different world in terms of what people will be involved in and what jobs they'll be working in. And how they, the future of jobs is going to challenge education and how we go about it. So right now, NZQA is involved in developing up a pilot. So right now, I can't share all the details, but it's with Ministry of Transport, NZTA, a major global um, autonomous vehicle player who wants to come and have do the research in New Zealand, have a big research centre over the multiple technologies to do with autonomous driving, which isn't um, just about sensing, it's not just about visioning, it's about sociobiological behaviours, all sorts of things. And they have said, but for us to come we need to have talent that is trained at the cutting edge in these areas. So how could you do that in New Zealand? And do it next year, have options next year. That doesn't enable you as a university, a wānanga, a polytech, a school to start thinking, well, how will we gear up for that? Because it's too long. How, how will you employ the people who are at the cutting edge to come and do the imparting of knowledge? Because they won't necessarily come here all the time or be paid uh, what we would offer to pay them. So what they said is Udacity, which is um, some of you may know, Udacity is, they call it a university, but it's just a virtual education platform that plugs into educationalists, it can be Harvard, Stanford, others, and provides uh, materials and interface learning opportunities uh, to anyone, anywhere. They said, we want to work with Udacity and the courses in this area that they could bring. That sounds all good, we can make that happen. What's the question they asked us? Why are we there as NZQA? Could you accredit this? Could you, if the kids went through it, could they have something that says they've done this? And at the moment, we can't because we have to accredit the, the agency that would be the educationalist. There's a whole lot of criteria of what you need to have. Then we'd look at the course, there's a whole lot more criteria. We do it, and I have to say, with real robustness and we try to be delivery in a timely way, but this isn't from this country, this isn't in our paradigm. But we're working to actually see how we can do it. Back to the future of jobs, when you look at the future of jobs, how you're going to participate in education 
could be a very different way because it could be in a construct like this that is nothing like most of the people in this room would know in terms of post-school education.